Hello and welcome back to another PriceCP Roblox Studio tutorial. In our tutorial for today, we're going to answer one of our viewers question. In our lesson player added events, a viewer asks how to make a live event that spawns an object or a part. He went on to explain instead of doing wait, I can make it appear in live event Unix time. All right, so here it is. Today we're gonna to learn how to make a live event in Roblox. Here we are back inside Studio. In my service storage, I have an exploding drop. My exploding drop has a sound file and a script that's gonna make it explode. In my server script service, I have a script that's gonna create a random explosion event. You can refer to our prior lesson on how all this stuff work. And notice here we're waiting for 10 seconds before we start the event. Let's now play and take a look. Just gonna wait for a few seconds for the event to start. And then we're gonna see like a lot of explosion all over the place. And there it is, the, the event has started. Before we get into changing this into a live event, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. So. Here, uh, I'm going to add a module script to my script and I'm going to create a function. So I'm going to say module dot, let's call it uh, start event equals to function. And then I'm going to go back to my script here. I'm going to cut all these and I'm gonna paste it inside my function. Now let's go back to our script and we're gonna call that function. So I'm gonna declare a require variable, local module equals to require and the path name to that module script is script dot module script. We're gonna wait for 10 seconds, then we're gonna call that function. So module dot start event. If I play the game right now, all it's gonna do is it's gonna wait for 10 seconds and it's gonna start the event. So I wanna change that. I, I don't want it to automatically start after 10 seconds. I wanna give it a real life date and time for when the event is gonna start, right? For example, if you have a live concert or a sporting event, you wanna give it a real human time for the event to start. So we're gonna remove this wait for 10 seconds here. And I'm gonna declare a couple of variables. I'm gonna declare a start time for my event, an end time for my event, and a current time. So the start time is just gonna be a string of numbers that's gonna represent the date and time and location of the event which is going to give you the time zone and the end time is just the start time and I'm adding 120 seconds to it. So in order for you to catch the event, you have to join this game between the start time and the end time, right? Which is uh, 120 seconds later, which would give you two minutes time frame for you to join the event. If you join the event before the start time, we're just gonna get, have a message that let you know how much uh, more time before the event starts. But if you join the game after the end time, then it, the event is just gonna tell you that you, you have missed the event. The, 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 the event is no longer available for you to join. Instead of just starting the event, I'm gonna put in the logic to check the time here I have a while loop and it's gonna keep on doing this every one second, right? Every one second is gonna go through the next iteration of this loop. And to start, I'm getting the, the, uh, the current time, which is the OS time. So if you come down to here and you do a print OS time, it's gonna give you, uh, let's open up the output window 
You see, it's gonna give you a string. This string is the current human time. So for example, if I want the event to start right now, I can change this start time here with this string. So that means anybody who joins in right now, the event is gonna start right now because this is the current time and this is gonna be two minutes later, right? So OS time is gonna give you the current Unix time, which is just this uh, string of numbers. And we're gonna go into that uh, in uh, a little bit later. And then we're comparing that the start time, we gotta make sure the start time is less than or equal to the current time. Because if the start time is greater than the current time, it means that the event has not started yet, right? So the start time has to be less than the current time and the current time has to be less than the end time. So when you join the event, the current time has to be between the start time and the end time. It gotta be in between that time frame for you to join the event. If the start time is greater than the current time, then the event has not started yet. So we're gonna print out the message it says event will start in and we're just taking the start time, we're subtracting the current time to give you the number in seconds. So that's how many seconds um, remaining before the event starts. Now, if you join in after the, the end time, right, then we're just gonna print out you have missed the event. The current time is, right? So you can compare this with this and you can tell that you have missed the event. If we want the event to start right now, all we have to do is go down here, hit enter, get the um, the timestamp, the Unix timestamp, copy that and put it in here, right? And then that's the start time of the event as of right now. But what if you want to schedule this live event? Not right now, but you want to schedule it for tomorrow or maybe a week later. So how do you get the string of numbers for something that's gonna happen a week later? So that's when we come to this website, epochconverter.com, to get that string of numbers. Uh, before we do that, uh, let me just explain a couple of things. So if I just put in a zero here, and I click on timestamp to human date. So timestamp is the string of numbers. Human date is a real human date, right? So if I click on it, it's gonna give me the date for this timestamp of zero. It's January 1st, 1970 at midnight. So starting, this is when they started this counter. And ever since this date, it's gonna add one to the counter for every second that passed. So if you have a timestamp, you can always come here and put in your timestamp, right? Click on this and it gives you the exact date for that timestamp. Now, if you wanna schedule your event in the future, right? You wanna get the string. So you're gonna come down to here. For example, I enter a time here. Let me see what time it is right now. So it's 12.15 uh, in the afternoon. So let me make this 12.20, right? And it's gonna be 12.20 p.m. local time, so that's my time. And then I'm gonna click on this. It's gonna give me the string. I'm gonna take this string here. I'm gonna bring it back to my Roblox Studio and I'll put it in here. So that's gonna be my start time. So my start time for my event is gonna be April, April 29th, 2022 at 12.20 p.m. Let me just check to see what time it is, the current time right now. So the current time right now is 16.512. So that's the same there. Then we got 4.9. The current time is 4.8. So it's almost there. So now we can start and play this game and see what happens. So now I, I got the start time, I got the end time, which is two minutes later, and I got the current time, which is the OS time here. It's gonna give me the current time. And then it's just gonna go through all this logic, right? So if I'm in the time frame, it's gonna start the event. If I'm too early, it's gonna print this out. And if I'm too late, it's gonna print this out. 
Let's play and take a look. Alright, so event will start in 170 seconds and it, it's gonna keep counting down until zero and then it's gonna start the event. So th this means that I'm early. When I took the time down, I actually gave myself uh, uh, an extra five minutes to get ready. So I'm way too early for this event. And if you know how to do text labels, you can actually, you know, post this message in the text label on the screen for the player to see and the player would know how much time is left before the event starts. So right now it's about uh, another two minutes. We're gonna take a break and we're gonna come back in two minutes and we'll see what's going on. All right guys, so I'm back from my water break and as you can see, I still have uh, 22 seconds to go. So I can, I can run around, but the event has not started yet. We would know when the event started because there would be a lot of explosions around. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one, zero, and there it is. the 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 live event has started. All right, so now the live event has started. If anyone else joins in to this server right now, they they would join into my game, right? Or if they join into a new server, then they gotta have their own server. But after two minutes, right? Because we gave it two minutes here. We gave it a two minutes time here for the, the time frame. So after two minutes, they would not be able to join into a new server after that. They would have to go either join into my server or they, they, they gonna get the message that they have missed the event. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna exit out of this game. And we're gonna give it like two minutes and, and we'll come back in and we'll see what happened. So let me just check the, uh, let's go back to the script. We're not gonna change anything, but we're gonna check the current time. So I wanna print OS time and see what is the current time. So the current time is 92. 84 so it has passed already so let's join back in and see what happened so say if i join into the event right now Alright, so I'm back into studio. We're not gonna change anything here, but let me check the current time to see what time it is. So we're gonna print um, OS time. And this is the time right here. So right now it's 9356. So that, that, that is past the end time because the end time is 9320, right? So the end time is the start time plus 120, that, that would give us 9320. So this is 9356. It has passed the time frame. So let's see what happened if I join back into the game right now. And there it is. You, you get the message, you have missed the event. Current time is, so it's giving you the current time and if you wanna check your code, you can check with this. So the, the, the end time should be 9320 and the current time is 9390. So the event has passed and you have missed the event. Everyone, that's how we make a live event in Roblox. Thank you all for tuning in and we will see you in the next tutorial.